hi, here's what you're going to do. You're going to, uh, uh, if this, this YouTube video, you're going to uh, hit the little down arrow next to the title, and it'll show you the description. You're going to download these files um, by clicking on the links and telling it Chrome, use Chrome, and then it'll take you to the store. You're going to install them and accept the permissions you need to accept. Uh, I'll go back. I'll do my app list also. Yeah, I already have these installed, obviously. Uh, the bottom is the file that has the list of apps on it. Again, use Chrome. It might ask you twice. And then you're going to click the down arrow icon at the top to download this file. You can tell Chrome again. And then it'll tell you it's downloaded. So you're good there. Um, so now you've got everything downloaded. So you're going to... Uh, First, let's go into my app list. Yeah, I might tell you this. Um, you're gonna when you first open the program, it'll probably have some setup stuff you have to do, except um, except the uh, permissions and such. So once you get into the app here, first thing you're gonna do is make a backup of your apps um, that you have right now. You hit the the window looking icon at the bottom, select all, and then. Uh, That'll select all your apps, and then you can click the save, which is the bottom left, and OK. So that'll save just a copy of, or a list of all the apps that you have installed on your phone right now. And it also creates the folder that we need um, for the next step. So the next step is you're going to use File Manager that you just downloaded and go to Downloads. And then you're going to have this file as the one that we downloaded from the YouTube video. You can long press it and then uh, touch Move at the bottom. And then you're going to go to the home icon at the top right here, or sorry, top left there. And then you're going to go main storage and then my app list. And that's going to have the, the backup of your apps as they are right there. You're going to paste and it'll put the recommended app list there. So now we're going to go back to my app list and you're going to hit the icon at the bottom uh, right sort of that has load file. It's a line with an arrow coming up out of the line Touch that and then you're going to touch the recommended File that we downloaded. So these are the apps that I recommend um, In addition to this I didn't put on here Fing F-I-N-G That's a network scanning app uh, that's that's good for seeing what's on your network. I recommend that one and also uh, Rain Raindrop what was it called? Raindrop. I think it's called raindrop.io. is a bookmarking app that's pretty good. Um, anywho, so we're back at, where were we? Here. Uh, we've got the recommended apps. Um, you can hit select all again down at the bottom. And that will select all the apps. You can unselect some if you want. And then you're going to hit the plus, or the, the sorry, the arrow play, whatever, to install this icon down at the bottom right. And that will bring up this, tell it OK. And what it's going to do is it's going to jump you to the Google Play Store for each app one by one. So you'll install, you'll go back, and then it'll jump you to the next one. So you can install all these without having to search for them in the, uh, in the store one by one. So that's an easy way to install this stuff. I'm going to cancel this by touching where it's red. Um, so that's it. That'll get you installed with all these. I'll uh, go over what they are real quick here for you. Um, the voice aloud reader is to read text or a um, web page or document um, to you. Um, you can use the share function in the phone where you press and hold a file or, or try to share a web page and you share it to this, this app and then it will let you, then you go into this, this voice aloud reader app and you can hit play and it will uh, um, let, it'll read you text. Um, it's not perfect. If it's a website, there's going to be a bunch of formatting and it'll say like, enter, 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 space, space, space. But you can, I mean, if it's paragraphs and stuff, you can, you can highlight text and, and have it read to you also. So that's a handy app. There may be a better one that the, now this is a couple years old. Um, the interface is a little bit clunky, but, um, it works. And there wasn't any other option when I found it. I don't think that was any good. 
uh, Adobe Clip is video editing. You can take uh, best feature about that is you can splice videos together. So if you make a couple of videos, you can um, clip them together. The the only sort of drawback is that when you go to export the video, save it. Just like all video editing, it takes forever to to render the video. Uh, video um, the Adobe Fill and Sign is e-signing for PDFs. Uh, it's free, and you can put your signature on PDFs. It may come with your phone already, but that's a good app. Backup and Restore will uh, actually save the the install file for apps that are already on your phone. So if there's a an app that's no longer available in the store or something, and you want to take it to your new phone, you can save the save the app install file with that. AZ Screen Recorder is what I'm using right now to make this video. You can do uh, screen captures and talk over them. It's very good, free. Uh, I looked and I did not find any other good options. That was a, a good find. Bitwarden is a password manager app. It's free. I used to use LastPass, which was good, but um, they started charging for, for their service. You couldn't use, um, use free on a PC and phone at the same time, which is kind of useless. So Bitwarden is the new LastPass. It's free. It's as good or better than LastPass, I think. Um, the only thing that I haven't figured out how to do yet is two-factor authentication for, for security. It it makes you log in every time or use your fingerprint. So it's not super exposed. Your passwords aren't super exposed, but LastPass also had like a um, two-step verification where it would text you, which was kind of nice. Bold Beast Recorder is a call recording program. Uh, there's some settings in there for that you have to maybe play with, depending on what kind of phone you have. Uh, my Samsung Galaxy S10e, I can record a regular phone call, I can record a call on speakerphone, and I can record one side of a Bluetooth conversation. I forget which side, but so it's not really useful for me for Bluetooth um, calls. You just have to test those three scenarios and see which ones it works for. Um, but that call recording must be a hard thing because there's a bunch of apps that fail to do it. And uh, Bold, Bold Beast is the one that I found that actually could, at least in most scenarios, if you're not on Bluetooth. Uh, Business Calendar is a good calendar app. A lot of features. Um, you can use it with Google Calendar and, and I think your built-in phone calendar and everything also. CamCard is a scanning app. You can take a picture of a business card and then create a contact from it. <coughs> Excuse me. That uh, will um, sort of, it reads the, the, the name and the email and the phone number and then saves it to a contact. It's, it's not perfect, but it works pretty good as long as the font's not too screwy on a business card. F-Stop is a gallery, a photo gallery and video gallery app. It um, main thing it does is it can embed metadata tags into photos, which is um, if you're going to organize your photos in a on a phone and you're going to use tags and you're going to use ratings. Um, most apps just store that in a database for the app, and as soon as you try to you use a different app or go to a um, a PC with those copy those photos to a PC, all that work is is lost unless it was actually putting them in folders that that can be maintained. Um, F-Stop actually uses the metadata that is saved into the photo file. So if you if you save tags, you organize by tags and labels and, and ratings, the F-Stop um, uh, metadata gets saved into the photo, and then that's portable to a, a PC or, or another. I don't, I don't know that there's any other apps that do that on phone, but um, like pro photo gallery apps like Lightroom and stuff use those metadata tags. So... That's my photo app for phones. Um, File Manager Plus we just use for managing managing files. Folder Sync Pro is a backup program for backing up your phone to a network drive or, or a PC. <coughs> Insta Address is um, like temporary email addresses. If you want to have a junk email address, you can create multiple ones for free. It seems to work, and I don't think it's... There's any kind of security sketchiness to it. It seems seems like a good app. I've been using it for a couple of years. Um, Microsoft Swift Key Keyboard, best keyboard. My app list we're using right now. Network Analyzer has a good Wi-Fi um, scanning uh, utility, so you can see what Wi-Fi networks around and what channel they're on and what the signal strength is. Um, 
has a bunch of other good tools too, but that's the basic stuff that most people might might be able to use. Uh, Night Shift is a blue light filter for using your phone in the dark. Nova Launcher is a home screen launcher app, so you can adjust the way your home screen looks and how many how many app icons you have on each screen and stuff. Um, that's an optional one, obviously. Uh, Pigeon is really cool. You can, I think you install a Pigeon Chrome browser extension on a PC, and then when you copy text on your phone, it syncs it over to the PC. So you can copy like a website address on your phone and then just paste it on the PC without having to like email it to yourself or anything. That's really cool. It goes both ways too. You can go from PC to phone also. Uh, Pixlr is a photo editing app. Um, Prey is a uh, like a lost phone app. You can you can get the location of your phone, which is built into Android now. But you can also I think lock and and wipe your contents of your phone remotely if it gets stolen, or um, maybe even like take a picture and like make stuff appear on the screen remotely from a PC or another phone. I think um, Pulse is text messaging. That's the best one right now. I think um, Textro is was the one I used previously, and it's okay. But the one thing Pulse has Textro doesn't is you can search a thread. So if you're looking at like you know you you said something to a specific person with Textro, you'd have to search all of your texts from everybody. There's just one search function, but in Pulse you can search a conversation, which is I don't know why that's omitted from Textro. Seems pretty obvious. Uh, S Gallery is a vault. Um, so you can, it encrypts files, photos, videos, um, so they're actually not visible and, and you have to enter a password to get them. So if there's anything like that you want, um, that one actually encrypts the file. Uh, most of the gallery, um, lock apps or encryption apps, just put them in a folder that's not visible by a, like the stock gallery or stock um, file manager app. They, it just sort of hides the folder, but it's not really encrypted. S gallery is um, sketch rigid sketches for taking photos and adding dimensions or like arrows to them. Uh, SMS backup and restore backs up your text messages to Google drive automatically um, like on a schedule. That's good. To do is the best to do list app. Um, I think it's really powerful. You can do a lot of things with it. Um, very uh, capable. There's a lot of simple to-do list apps that are fine, but Todoist is um, the one that I use because you can sort of use it however makes sense to you, and whatever you're looking for, it will probably do. Uh, True Phone is my dialer um, that I use for dialing um, and contact management, and then True Caller is just for caller ID. True Caller is also a dialer, but their dialer is junk. Um, it used to be good. And I don't know what happened. They like started from scratch and tried to simplify it, and now it's it's not very powerful, not very capable. True Phone, the dialer, you can uh, when you're looking at your contacts, you can create a different action for swiping the contact left, swiping it right, touching the picture on the contact, and then you can have like custom. There's a couple custom icons you can overlay on each contact. For I have mine to to look at the call history because usually that's kind of kludgy to find the call history um, in dialers. So that's a good dialer. And then true caller is just configured to pop up the banner of uh, it's like a, like a user sourced um, caller ID. So if it's a junk spam, it'll usually say, um, so that's a good caller ID app. I remember it's a, it might be a little bit funky to set up uh, true color and have it not be your dialer that, that takes a little bit of work because it wants you to when you try to install it it wants to be your dialer but you don't want that um so that's it and then the other couple ones were raindrop io for bookmarks and fing for network scanning hopefully that helps anybody out I've, a lot of these apps i've been using for years and um periodically some some of them i've gone and tried to find better versions of but um, there haven't been. So, uh, that's what I got. Hopefully it helps you out. Thanks.